Hello, hello. My name is Elise. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing so, so good today. I am very excited because today we get to do a new round of my five star predictions for 2023. So I did a five star predictions video halfway through 2022 when I started booktube and I recently finished all of those books and came out with a video on how all of those went. I'll put the link to that video down below in case you're interested to see how good I was at gauging if I liked them and see all the books that I read for that. Spoiler, I am pretty good at it. So I'm going to do it again and see how that goes. So if you don't know, if you haven't seen that video, first things first, basically I choose 10 books total, five backlist and five front list. Backlist just means anything published before 2023 and front list means anything published in 2023. Five 2023 releases, five previous to that releases and those are the only rules well okay that's a lie there is one other rule so the other rule that I sort of didn't originally create for myself but it ended up working out the first time and I want to continue it is all of the books that I'm picking are authors that I've never read from before so I think this is part of the joy of doing five star predictions for me is trying to find out new authors that I don't know if I already love them or not. And that's really what I want to keep my five star predictions as. Of course, if it's an author I've loved in the past, I'm already more likely to pick up their new books anyway and like know that I will like that. Like that's a pretty sure bet for me and I'm gonna pick up those anyway. So I want the five star predictions to really be about finding new to me authors and new to me books that I wouldn't have otherwise necessarily like been drawn to pre-order or pick up. Like it wouldn't have been a guaranteed thing. So these are all new to me authors and I'm very excited to get into them. So we're gonna start with the backlist books and they, then we will go to the front list books. I'll give you the dates of release for the front listed books as we talk about those. So let's go ahead and get into it. For our backlisted books, I'm going to start with the one that I'm most sure about. So I almost put this on my five star predictions last time and I had plans to read it last year, but I didn't have a t uh, enough time to get to it at the end of the year. So I was like, oh, this works out for me because now it can be a five star predictions book. And that is The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. And this is by Disha Filia. This is a short story collection that everybody knows about and everybody raves about. And that's partly why I'm so sure of this one. I just have not heard anyone say that they didn't love this. And it also sounds right up my alley. So this is published by West Virginia University Press. These all follow black women who are a part of the church, as the title would suggest. And I think it has themes of desire and pursuing, like things that the church wouldn't normally condone them pursuing. Basically not having to be good all the time or like good and righteous in the way that the church tells you you need to be. So I know I will love this already. I can't freaking wait. I love reading about desire and I have heard that the writing in this is just beautiful. So yeah, I, I have no doubt this will be a five star, but it's going on here. So we're, we're starting off strong. So that is the first one. Next up we have How Much of These Hills is Gold. This is by C. Pam Zhang and this is published by Riverhead. So this is a Western, um, but I think it's like a Western with a twist kind of because Si Pam Zhang is uh, from Beijing. So I think there's a little bit of that influence going on in the story as well. So I think this has some like Chinese symbolism in it as well as like it being an adventure story. I also think there's a sibling dynamic in here, which is always interesting to read about. So. I'm not going to read more into the plot than that because I want to be somewhat surprised. It's a Western. It's going to be great. I've heard great things. So that is the next five star prediction. Next up, we have one that I've been wanting to read for a while. And when this first came out, everyone that I saw reading this just absolutely loved it. And I haven't gotten around to it yet, but that is Butter Honey Pig Bread. This is by Francesca Equiasi, and this is published by Arsenal 
pulp press. This one follows three women, a mother and her twin daughters. And the mother believes that she is a spirit. What's the type of spirit? Agbanji, I think is how you pronounce it, Agbanji, which is a spirit that basically, like it's meant to be like a curse, like a bad spirit that dies repeatedly in childhood and then gets reborn. And she thinks that the family is being cursed by her continuing to stay alive. So that's like the very just beginning of the premise. I don't think I want to know more than that, um, but that's already intriguing enough for me. I love stories centering around women and I like the mother-daughter dynamic, like a challenging, complicated mother-daughter dynamic. So I think this will be great. Again, I've heard that the writing is stunning in this. So that is why it is a pick on here. Next up, we have another one that I meant to read, read last year and then didn't get a chance to do it. And that is Tender is the Flesh. Everybody and their mom has also read this one. This is by Agustina Basterica and it's translated from the Spanish by whom? This is translated from the Spanish by Sarah Moss. And this one is published by Scribner. I'm sure you know what this is about, but this is a cannibalism story. So it's a dystopian novel in which all of the meat in, that exists in the world has been tainted and humans are unable to eat it. So the government decides that we are going to start farming humans in order to have meat and we will eat human meat instead. So I think, you know, this is a critique of the meat industry for sure. Uh, also a critique of government policy. Um, and yeah, just the lack of humanity that some people can have. So I'm very much excited to read this. So many people love this, which is again, part of with the backlist ones. It's ones that like just get rave reviews that seem like a pretty sure bet. So I'm excited to get to this one. And then lastly, for the backlist titles, we have Kim Jeong, born 1982. This is by Cho Nam Ju, and this is translated, let's see, by whom? This is translated from the Korean by Jamie Chang, and this is published by Liverlight. Um, this one I've also heard amazing things about. That will be a theme throughout all of these. Um, but this is a woman who is experiencing a vast amount of misogyny in Korea and how that is deeply affecting her mental health. I know that this book has footnotes in it that have like actual historical facts um, in Korea to go along with the narrative, which I think just sounds fascinating. Um, I think when you're, you're talking about a book like this that is really critiquing a government, having that factual information be infuriating uh, right there alongside the narrative will be very impactful and poignant. So yeah, that is Kim Jeong, born 1982. So those are the five backlisted books that I will be getting to in the year 2023. Now let's get into the front list. Two of them I already have because they have come out already. And I will say all of these books I have pre-ordered. I pre-order a decent amount of books every year, mostly from small presses or indie presses. And I figure, you know, the ones that I'm pre-ordering pre are probably the ones that I'm most excited to read um, and I feel the most confident about. So I chose from those and there's a decent amount of ch to choose from. But yeah, I, I decided to go with the ones that like the premises sounded like spot on for me since I don't really know the writing style too well. And there aren't really a ton of reviews about these yet because most of them haven't come out yet. So let's start from the beginning and I will give you release dates along the way. I have my little notebook here so I can get the release date. So first one is one that I already have and that is Big Swiss by Jen Began. This came out on February 7th and this is published by Scribner. I think I said this in the video that I hauled this in but this is the only book that I pre-ordered from a big press. Um, so kudos to this book for being the only one and that is because the premise sounds so perfect for me. I just could not deny that this was an Elise book and I had to get it. So this follows a transcriptionist who is working for a therapist and the therapist has a particular male client that as the transcriptionist is transcribing the sessions 
they start becoming infatuated with this male client and then they eventually end up meeting them outside of work and the snowballs from there. So I think this is going to be very plotty, um, very kind of like dark, seductive type of vibes. Look at this cover. I can't even believe it. So I'm, I'm very excited for this. Like if I don't love this, I'm going to be shocked, shocked. That is Big Swiss. Can't wait to get to that. The next one is a nonfiction, and this is my most anticipated nonfiction of the year. You might have already seen this in my book haul as well, and that is Wanting. This is a collection of essays that came out on February 14th, very apt. It came out on Valentine's Day, um, and this is published by Catapult. This is edited by Margot Kahn and Kelly McMasters. The little like subheading to this is Women Writing About Desire. And it is what it says on the cover. It's a bunch of essays about desire in its many, many, many different forms. This is desire in female or femme bodies or perspectives. So I will preface it with that. I think this is just trying to dismantle a bunch of like constructs we have about female desire. So I'm here for that. And I think I will love this. I can't wait to dive in. This has stuff from lots of authors that we know and love, including Tori Peters and Lisa Tadeo and many, many more. So yeah, that is wanting. Can't wait to get to this. Thirdly, we have a book from Deep Vellum and that is The Book of Eve. I'll put the cover here because the cover is gorge. Love it. Um, anytime there's like a vulva on the cover, I'm here for it. And this one comes out on March 21st. And again, I've pre-ordered it, so I will get it at some point. And this one, the premise is like, sounds so good. And I have been wanting to read Carmen Buyosa for a very long time. And I haven't ever done it before. There have been other of her works translated in English. This one's translated from the Spanish by Samantha Schnee. And this one is a retelling of the book of Genesis. I know the audacity. I love it. It's all from the perspective of Eve. So basically Eve has come to rewrite the story and tell the truth because she does not think that it has been told accurately. And we get the book of Genesis again from her perspective. So I can't wait. This is going to be so feminist and great and glorious and everything I want. So the book of Eve. Yeah. Five star prediction for sure. I could not be more excited for this. Um, and you'll kind of notice a theme that a lot of these are coming out in the beginning of the year. And that is by design because I want to make sure I actually have time to read all of them in the year. Um, so if I pick a lot of stuff that doesn't come out at the end of the year, it will get backlogged. So I am kind of slightly picking more things from the beginning of the year so I don't get backlogged and have like lots of time to read them. Um, but the other two I think do come out a little bit later. And the next two books are both from Coffeehouse Press. I did the Coffeehouse Press subscription this year, so I will be getting all of the books that Coffeehouse Press publishes this year. I think there's going to be six or seven total. I can't quite remember. I wanted the all but two of the books anyway. And the other ones still sound good. They just wouldn't have been ones that I pre-ordered. But yeah, I basically got them for free. So I will take that. Um, so I'm very excited to get all of those books this year. The first one is called A Cowardly Woman No More. And this comes out on April 4th. Let me get this description for you. Um, so this says, over the course of one fateful day, so it's a novel that takes place in 24 hours, Trisha Donahue, the main character, begins to reclaim her courage, discover secrets in a familiar place. Um, and this is basically a, an adventure story. I think this starts out by Trisha being overlooked for a promotion at her job that she is very much qualified for. And it's given to an underqualified man. And that sort of sets her off on this course um, that somehow, I do not know, ends up in space. Yes, you heard me right. Ends up in space. So I think it is a little bit of a sci-fi novel going on here. So yeah, I think it's an adventure story that talks about feminism a lot. You're starting to see all the themes between all of these books that I'm choosing. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. I think this will be um, like very funny. Um, I think this 
author is known for writing like humorous and witty type of prose. So I can't wait for this. I, I'm ready for a space novel. I don't read that very often, but it's very much exciting and fun to come back to every time that I do. So that is A Cowardly Woman No More. And this is by Ellen Cooney. The last book is another nonfiction on the list. And again, from Coffee House Press, and that is In Vitro. This is by Isabella Zapata, and this is translated from the Spanish by Robin Myers. And the subtitle for this one, let me read it to you, is On Longing and Transformation. And this follows the author's journey of doing in vitro fertilization. Yeah, I think this is trying to expand upon and add more layers and dimension to the stories that we tell about pregnancy by following her own complicated journey going through the in vitro process. So I think, you know, this has potential to be very hard hitting. And I think it's also like courageous to be able to share your type of story with this. And I can't wait to read it. Looking forward to this one as well. So those are all the books, all 10 books that I have predicted will be five stars for me this year that I'm going to get to. Um, so once I get through all of these, I will check back in and see how it went. I want to know, I'm curious if you have heard about any of these books, read any of these books, what you thought about them, or if you're interested based on what I've talked about today, I would love for you to read these books along with me so we can discuss. So please let me know if you're interested. And yeah, let me know what the last, you know, five star book you read or the last five star book you predicted for yourself. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.